um, MDOT MBA Administrator, Chrissy Neiser, and I really appreciate you joining us. We're excited to be joined today by our special guest, Jim Ports, who's the Executive Director of the Maryland Transportation Authority. Nice to see you, Jim. It's a pleasure to be here, Chrissy. Yeah, we really appreciate it. We've been um, invested in finding collaborative relationships with other mm -hmm. sister agencies throughout the state over the last few years. And um, for those of you who watched back in April, you remember that we have our, our fellow colleague, Tim Smith, from the State Highway Administration. And we talked about issues on work zones and distracted driving. I know you share the passion on those safety issues, so we'll get to that in a little bit. But mm -hmm. first, we're going to start off by talking about premier customer service. And I know that's something that both of our agencies really share that focus on. I know it's a, a clear mission for you as EasyPass provides that critical services mm -hmm. with our bridges and tunnels. And you recently launched a new system and I know we're eager to talk about that and to make sure customers are aware of all the options that they have. Yeah, that's correct. Thanks, Chrissy. And so it's it's Drive Easy MD and it's all things that are driving it through our tolls. Mm -hmm. Okay? It, it's our new website. It has a chat feature, which is something we've never had before. And it also offers new opportunities for different services. For example, everybody's familiar with EasyPass. Mm -hmm. And we encourage people that's the best option. And of course, we also have the video toll, mm -hmm. which is, uh, it allows you to go through without paying uh, right away and then we send you a bill. But one of the better options now we have is pay by plate. And pay by plate is you don't have a transponder, but you give us your credit card and, and your tag number. Mm -hmm. And then we basically debit your account. And we're also going to have other options come online later on. We're looking at mobile apps that are going to be uh, possible in the future and other discounts. And so keep, keep, on, keep looking at our website and we'll, you know, we'll keep updating it. And as we hear from customers, we'll continue to update our website uh, to make driving easy for all Marylanders. That's great. I like the logo and definitely customers are looking for options, right? So mm -hmm. wonderful that with your new system, you're able to provide additional ways to access your services and, and do so in an efficient and a convenient way. So that sounds like some really great developments and more to come, as you said, so keep mm -hmm. tuned there. Um, we're also proud to be part of a partnership with you at our branch offices, and that's something that's exciting. We've even expanded recently at some additional locations. Maybe you want to talk about the services you offer there. Yeah, that's correct. I mean. That was your baby, right? Uh, expanding services to become a one-stop shop, and you offer so many services, and we're just glad to be partners as part of that. You know, one of our best assets is our customer service centers, and mm -hmm. and we we've expanded our hours. We're in the MBA centers. We also have them at our facilities, but you know, we 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 help customers. If you want to pay your current bill, mm -hmm. if uh, you want to talk about commuter discounts. They can assist you in what plan is best for you. I do want to remind people, though, that at the MVA centers, mm -hmm. that you still have to make an appointment because appointments are needed at the MVA. But you can walk into one of our centers also, and again, they're at all of our facilities. So feel free to look at the website, see where our facilities are, and come on in and see our folks. That's great, and thanks for the reminder about still being appointment only at M.MVA branch offices. I still get that question frequently. <laughs> um, I will say we've greatly expanded the number of available appointments, so please check out if you need to come visit us. Um, plan ahead and go ahead and make that appointment, but we are still serving folks by appointment only. And yeah, thanks for mentioning those additional services. It's something that we feel passionately about at MBA. You know, we have the ability um, serving every resident of Maryland, that responsibility. And so if we can offer them additional services like Easy Pass mm -hmm. that they might need, you know, some folks do it online or call the call mm -hmm. center, but some folks want to come in person and have that interaction to get their questions answered as, as you indicated. So also happy to have some services like TSA PreCheck. So, you know, you want to fly and have that convenience. Um, for our transportation workers at the port, we do the TWIC card, mm -hmm. um, which is a critical uh, for our economy and keeping that moving, um, as well as the Department of Natural Resources. So there's hunting and fishing licenses, maybe a boat registration. You can take care of those services at many of our branch offices. And one that I know is near and dear to your heart, our, our Veterans Service uh, Department, we partnered with them, and we have many service centers right at M.MBA branch office offices where they can get information. Mm -hmm. Really encourage everybody to go to our website at mba.maryland.gov. You can check out where these specific locations are. Every office is a little bit different, so I encourage you to check it out. And if you're coming to M.MBA for service, maybe you can get some additional business done at the same time. 
Now, we've talked about customer service, but I do want to pivot to highway safety. I know Jim is the former deputy administrator of the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, clearly a passion of yours as well. Um, I serve as the governor's highway safety rep. In Maryland, our goal is to reach zero fatalities, and unfortunately, during the pandemic, really some dangerous driving behavior, high speed, dangerous interactions, and now with traffic you know, resuming to a higher level, it's incredibly concerning because more vehicles on the road, obviously more interactions and potential for crashes and serious injuries. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. I think uh, there's a few things we can remember. I, I think the pandemic uh, reduced traffic, so people picked up some bad behaviors. Mm -hmm. They think it's NASCAR out there. It's not. Uh, we encourage people to slow down and, and respect other people on the road. We also want to remind motors, like for example, if you're at the Bay Bridge, mm -hmm. Stay on 50. That's the quickest way to get to where you're going, Ocean City. I know Waze and Google takes you off direction, but, but re be respectful of the local residents in that area. And you know, they may need a first responder. And if you're jamming up their roads, it's really, it really causes problems. And, and keep in mind also that a lot of the, the crashes that we see are rear end crashes. Mm -hmm. There's two primary, well, three primary reasons why that occurs. You're following too closely, mm -hmm. you're going too fast, mm -hmm. or you're distracted. Right. And all of those situations are due to behavior. Mm -hmm. And if we work together, we can change some of the behavior. And then these are some of the common causes we see of crashes, but we also want to talk about something else that we see on our roadways, which is, you know, maybe you have a, a minor fender bender or you have a mishap in your vehicle and you have to pull over to the side of the road. We really want to give some important tips to motorists to remember so that they can be safe um, because once you get out of that car, uh, you become a pedestrian and you are just as vulnerable, especially on a major roadway or highway where the speed is higher. Um, it's very dangerous for you to get out of that car. Mm -hmm. So we've got some tips that we've worked on, again, with that partnership, MBA, MDTA, MSP, some of our sister agencies, SHA as well, um, to provide motorists with so they know what to do if that happens to you. Mm -hmm. No, I couldn't agree more, Christy, and I think every incident is unique, <laughs> right? And so. You need to be prepared, as you said. But, but also important is to prepare your vehicle. Hmm. You know, if you're going to go on a trip, make sure your tires are inflated. Make sure you have your oil checked. Make sure you, your car is in good working condition because if you're a disabled vehicle, then that causes backups and, and obviously you're not going to reach your destination. And, and if you're, you're carrying luggage or things on your roof, like we see a lot of people doing as they're going to Ocean City, for example, make sure it's secure mm -hmm. because otherwise we have things getting in the roadway. We have to stop traffic, reduce the lanes, and then nobody gets to their destination on time. And, right. and then that causes frustration and behavioral problems, right? right. And it can so be dangerous. You can see those objects flying and it's, it's a little scary absolutely. if you're driving on the roadway. Absolutely. And, and um, so it's important to make sure that you're prepared. And, yeah. and I know that, that you and I both share that mm -hmm. behavioral aspect of being prepared. Definitely. 94% of crashes are caused by behavior, so we want to focus on that, and that's why we keep um, having these reminders about important things to do. And so, you know, if your vehicle does become disabled, we want to make sure you become in a, in a minor crash. Make sure you assess your surroundings. That's really the first thing to do, right? Determine um, what's going on, what's near you, and move as far off the roadway as possible. The furthest you can get off, the better you are. In some places there's a shoulder, in some places there might not be. Mm -hmm. Even if you can pull off, you know, if there's an exit ramp that's close by and you can get off the highway altogether, we encourage you to get as far off the roadway as possible. Yeah, you're absolutely correct, Chrissy. It's, it's very dangerous uh, being in a shoulder when you're a disabled mm -hmm. vehicle. And we encourage people to call pound 77 and that'll direct you to the nearest uh, state police barracks mm -hmm. where they can assist you. And if you're on an MDTA facility, it'll the pound 77 will direct you to an MDTA police officer. And as you mentioned, it's, it's important to, if you're gonna stay in the vehicle, stay buckled up, make sure that you're safe. It can help you in a, in a crash situation. But if you do leave the vehicle, leave from the passenger side, get on the other side of the guardrail, get away, as far away as you can, because we've had people get hit mm -hmm. uh, while sitting in the, in the shoulders, as well as police officers mm -hmm. getting hit. We had some state police uh, recently uh, be injured and also some MDTA police injured 
by assisting drivers on the side of the road. And, and if you're a driver and you're going past a, a vehicle, slow down or move over. We had the move over law for a reason. <laughs> it's to protect those who are trying to protect us, especially our police officers. And, and we need to give them the space that they need to keep everybody safe. It's a really important message. Um, such respect for our law enforcement colleagues statewide, and they put themselves in really dangerous situations, and so we ask for that respect for them and you know, making sure we keep them safe. And especially here, we're, we're actually at our MDTA police headquarters, and so you know, we just wanna really thank them and the great work they do every day to keep us safe. They're out there day and night in all mm -hmm. kinds of weather conditions, and so just a gratitude for that and for the service they provide to all Maryland residents. So I would encourage folks to go out, there's additional safety related information online, there's many resources available. You can follow M.MVA, you can follow MDTA, as well as our Maryland Highway Safety Office. We've got a lot of great resources, and so check out the links that we're providing. And I really would like to thank you, Jim, for being with us here today to talk about these great enhancements that are coming with MDTA and your new system that you've deployed. Some things are already in place and some things to come soon. I know customers will really appreciate that. And again, our focus on highway safety and, and making sure that those partnerships are strong together will reach that zero fatalities in Maryland. So I'd like to thank everybody who joined us today. Um, look forward to next time that we'll have a further conversation. So until then, be safe and take care.